All right, as we talk about transforming objects within our viewports using our transform tools, first we need to talk about what the transform tools are. So here we have select and move, select and rotate, select and scale, and there are two other versions of scale. We have non-uniform scale and squash and stretch. So uniform scale will allow me to just drag and make the object bigger. And even though it's set to uniform scale, I can click on any of these single axes here and do a non-uniform scale. So the tool itself, even though it says it's uniform scale, still allows me to get to individual axes to work with. That works effectively for all of these tools. So here in the center, I can move on all three axes at the same time. If I click on a pair of axes, the little square between them, I'll move on those two axes or I can click and drag on a single axis to move and transform in a single direction. Then with the rotate tool, same thing. Right now the Z axis is highlighted, the blue one. If I click on the red one, I'll see that that one was blue. And then the green is my Y axis and the red is the X axis. So I can click and drag in any of those cardinal directions. Again, right click to cancel to transform any of those directions. Now, if I just want to free transform, I just drag around in the middle of the transform gizmo. And if I want to rotate in screen space, I can click and drag on the gray circle around the outside edge. Lots of different ways to work with my object. And if I get it rotated where I really don't like it, I can right click on the numbers down here at the bottom to reset them back to zero. Now I could actually highlight and type in zero as well, but just right clicking on the spinners sets them back to zero. Same with the move tool. If I want to put this object in the exact center of the world, I can try to move it and get it all perfect and look at it in my top view and wireframe and get it really, really close. But there are still some decimal values. So I right click on those spinners to set them to zero. Now I know it's in the exact center. So let's switch this back to perspective and back to a realistic shade so we can see those shadows. That's always kind of cool. But maybe I really want this object positioned on another object. So select in place. So I just click and drag and I can drag this over any other object in my scene. And as I drag it around, I can place it anywhere on another object kind of a cool tool. It gives a lot of flexibility. All right, so let's drop it right on top. All right, so it's actually pretty close to center. Not exactly, but it's pretty close. Now, maybe I want to go back to the parameters for that object and adjust the radius and the height. Now I get a little rocket. Select in place is really cool. It allows us to take one object and basically place it onto another object. So maybe I want to put the sphere on top of the box. For this, it's using the center of the object. So how do we fix that? Well, if I right click on these tools, I can tell it to use the base as the pivot. And then as I slide it around, it's using the very bottom of the sphere to line up with the object. So with something like a sphere, we want to use that. Otherwise, it's using the pivot point for the object. I can also turn on auto parent. So as I attach this or align it with the box, now we'll see over here that the chamfered box has a child of the Sphere 01. So Sphere 01 is now parented to the box. So that means that wherever the box goes, it's going to take the ball with. The ball is free to move away, but the parent always controls the child. Chamfer box is the parent, Sphere 01 is the child. The parent's always in control. There are several different ways to navigate or transform objects within your viewport space. Select and place is a new kind of cool one that I think is going to help for a lot of basic alignment objects or basically aligning objects together, but is actually a pretty cool new tool. One thing you want to remember though, as you transform objects using your orthographic views, the front, the top, and the side is going to be a much more accurate way to work. So if I really wanted that ball in the center, I'd use my top view to get that organized as accurately as I could. I also have different tools like Align that would let me do that. 
So I want to align it just on X and Y. So then it'll be perfectly aligned in the X and Y axes and not the Z axis. Really, it just comes down to getting used to the tools and how they work and being able to then turn that into being able to organize multiple objects together and arranged into a scene.